Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher, and today we're going to take a look at the tangle Hellrevo by Carrie Hume. I will let you figure out where this name came from. <laughs> it's neat. All right, so we're, uh, grid pattern first. And I'm going to divide this, let's see, do I want to go off to the edge? Nah, we're going to go close to the edge. So I'm just going to make a little inky border. All right. Now I will divide it up into, uh, we'll do nine squares, so we'll shoot for thirds here and let me tell you this is a forgivable tangle so that's just nice to know up front okay so if your grid is a little bit wonky like mine a lot of times is no worries okay then actually yeah let me just do this all right we're going to i'm starting in the first row and in the upper right, I'm going to put a little box. We're going to square that off. Then the next one, we're going to go bot. Or excuse me, what did, I, did I say right? <laughs> upper left, and then we're going to go bottom left, and then upper left. We're going to skip this row and, and repeat this same one. So again, upper left. And so if you're doing a larger pattern or, you know, a larger space and you have more than nine, then it just, you can just repeat, uh, alternating, do a row like this, skip, do a row like that. Okay. And then we're going to come back and kind of do the opposite upper right. And then lower right and then upper right so again however your grid is laid out i'm, I'm going to switch to my graphic to fill these in and, and yes you will fill those in you know honestly if you start off with the wrong one so you can see where it, it's upper lower upper lower on one side and then flipping it around opposite on the next row I was half thinking I should just do it with this, but that's okay. Sometimes I don't like to because, um, well, I could, I'm going to expand this here. Well, I suppose you can work and get that nice um, corner with this. And if I need to, you can come back with the, the O1 or a smaller pen if you're not using, um, you know, microns or something that have, um, have the numbers on them but it does make it handy to have something a little thicker just to do these little fill-in places so it goes a little faster okay and these remind me well not necessarily these more of these remind me of uh, bowling scorecards <laughs> just a little bit Okay, there we go. Now, the next steps are just to do some aura ink and have it be random. Now, this is where I usually, uh, you know, take a deep breath. And I think that's why I've put off doing this, uh, this tangle for a while. And um, somebody on YouTube, we were, it was asking a question. Uh, about something else, and then had mentioned, oh, I'd really like to see this tangle. I was, I was like, oh, I know that tangle, and oh, I've not done that one. <laughs> because, I, you know, I looked at the step out, and I'm like, oh, it has randomness. Oh. You know, and here's what I'm going to do, is I'm just putting the lines down kind of however I want them, and I'm not, I'm working to not worry about it. Because you can go in 
and fill in. You know, here's a thought as well, except I don't have them handy, so I'm not going to do it. Here's a thought. If you happen to have different sizes of pens, so for instance, um, I just let me just peek and see if I have it handy. No. Well, we'll use the graphic one. So say I want to do, um, oh, I want to do one closer to the edge here. And I just want to do that thicker. So why not utilize some of these, you know, different sizes of pens? And I'm pretty sure that's part of why they came out with them for just that. Oh, here's my, okay, here's a 10. I'll locate my 12 is somewhere else. Um, but that, you know, because I was what I was going to do was just fill in later with these. And, you know, and this is one of those completely up to you where you want to have them thicker, how thick you want to have them, but we're all, we're just auraing that box. And maybe, uh, let's see, and it might just be easier to just do one and then come back afterwards. That's what I'm thinking. Because then you're, you know, flipping up, you know, the pen, you know, kind of, you know, in the effort of going back and forth and stuff like that. And it's okay to do, you know, something like this. I'm doing this thick on this edge and see how I just made it sloppy there. Tisk tisk. <laughs> All right. So decision made. We're just going to stick with uh, just the regular pen and um, yeah, and like I said, I just it's something that I work on with through the tangle. So let's, uh, uh, this is what I call spontaneous creativity, just doing and not thinking. I just have, I don't know why. <laughs> if it's a uh, feeling like I, oh, it, like there's a right or wrong and there's not. And I know that I'm not sure what it is, but it is there. And, um, Seriously, through Zentangle, I just keep working at it. And tangles like this, um, there's some other ones that I've done recently. Same same idea. Where it's, yeah, yeah you know, the just not thinking about it. Okay, let's do this one. We'll do this one thicker. You know, and if you get inspired along the way, it's too, so like, just like that. It's like, well, I'm going to do, you know, mark it sort of by just doing that, the double line. So that way it's... Uh, you know that that's what you want to do with it. Oh, and let's do this one. And then as you're thickening them, you know, see what you like, see how it's laying out, and see if there's any other changes that you want to make. And then we can neaten it out. And then so this is how you see that it is quite forgiving because this is all random. So when it's all random and it doesn't matter, then, it just, like I said, it just makes it easier. And then what I'm probably going to do is maybe come back and neaten up some of these if they're just a little bit too out of control. I see some little wisps here and there. And let me thicken this one up because just one... Oh, and two, you can put, you know, of course, as many lines as you want. I'm just kind of stuck with three-ish. And then also, you don't necessarily have to. I kind of have a thick one in each one, don't I? You know, it's like you don't have to do that either. You can leave some that just have regular lines. But, you know, let's, let's do this with, uh, ooh, we'll do two in this one because you could do that too. And I think I put these two together just thinking, I'll just have a couple close together. But now, apparently, I have now decided that I'm filling that in. This is also where if you need to, um, I had mentioned neatening up the lines in general. But, uh, you know, if they're, if you need to make them a little straighter or whatever, of course you can. 
All right, let's do this one on the outside. I haven't done too many that were on the absolute outside. Okay, and then we're going to do some shading. And that got a little close to there. Hmm. See, and if you decide, well, I just really, you know. Well, debating, debating. Let's see. Oh, neat. You know, it's one of those things where if, if somebody else was doing it, I'd probably like it a lot better. And then that tells me if I let it, just let it sit for a minute, uh, it's one of those that you'll come back and go, oh, look at how neat that is. <laughs> I have to straighten that up so that way it looks the same, same-ish distance there. Okay, so let's call that a day. And really quick, I just want to neaten some of these up. And, and some of this stuff will be hidden by the shading, just it's going to depend. And then at the same time, as we all know, well, we who, if you've been doing Zentangle for a little bit, or at least following my videos, you know that in the end, it doesn't matter because it's all going to be perfect. Okay. Whether, whether we think so or not, it just is. Okay. Shading. We're going to put some graphite. So let me, on every line, so where I have... The lines are ending on the grid. If that makes any sense. I don't even know. Um, you can see how this is going up. And essentially, almost like it, it could be tucking under there. So there's that one. Let me just do all of these that are on the same. Going the same direction. Oh, apparently it's just, uh, just those. Yes. I'm sure I'll find the ones that I miss. And you can see what I mean. Where the line is going up, we're just going to cross, you know, those lines right where they're essentially tucking under. And that's what we're going to make it look like. Oh. <laughs> and if you end up, <laughs> if you end up figuring out where the name came from, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, no spoilers for, for anyone that hasn't. You could just put got it in the uh in the comments if you want okay oh one more so it helps you know, just turning your tile and then like i said putting the graphite and, and if you notice i'm putting it on the side of the box where the lines are going up so i, I want to avoid you know um, this part here i think i got them all Usually I figure out where I don't when we do the uh, use of the tortillon. Okay, so while I have it in this uh, position, what we're going to do is um, just bring that graphite down, just spreading it a little bit, okay? Make a little bit of a gradient. It will all depend on how big your space is. What we don't want to do is have it be all gray. So just bring it out a little bit. And then the way I do the shading... Well, kind of like with the pencil, too, where I'm holding the pencil where I want the graphite to be the darkest, and I'm doing the same with the tortillon. So I'm going to just turn it, and we'll just hit all these spaces where it is up. And I'm kind of I'm doing a little bit of a circular motion, not a whole lot, because like I said, I don't want to bring it down too far. You can always go and adjust it afterwards. So I just want to have a bit of a gradient, but it does add a lot more... Contrast and drama, if you will, when we leave it kind of dark. And you can always go back and add more. But right now, I just, like I said, I want to have that gradient, but have it, you know, it, um, steep is the word. I want, to have, I want to have a steep gradient. I'm just making stuff up. Although I think, I think you know what I mean. Okay. Again, I like to have that gradient, so I sometimes will just look and touch some things up. But, and I was just watching what I was doing and not watching the screen, but I think, now I'm looking at the screen, you can totally see how it, it has 
popped up these these edges and that's why it's important to stay on this side not not having any graphite going in here and then also the amount of graphite used if you go light you might not have this effect i don't know if i i don't know if i want to go any darker than that but um but you get more dramatic effect when it goes a little bit darker and is like i said too if it if these squares were bigger you might be able to go a little bit darker and have it come a little further out into the box because there's room we lose the effect if it's all gray you have to have some original tile color in order for that to work and i think i got all of the edges so yeah it's a fun tangle i'm glad i was uh i'm glad um Keith, that you asked about that and uh and uh I, you know i like the challenge so you know i'll, I'll throw that out there also I, I don't necessarily have a sometimes i have a little bit of a plan as to what i'm putting in but if you have a request we'll you know put it in the chat and or in the comments and uh we'll just see if we can make it happen all right in the description box uh make sure to check out the links to the step outs step outs are instructions if you're new to zentangle uh, I will have both uh, mine as well as uh, a link. I put it under for more inspiration. And that is, uh, it's usually to Tangle Patterns or wherever I found the Tangle. You know, it could be their blog or whatever. So that way you can see it from the originator's hand. And they usually have some extra artwork and it's always nice to see that too. Plus the story. Um, if there is one, you know, to the name or to how the Tangle was inspired and all that kind of stuff. Below all of that, ways to connect with me so if you enjoy if you enjoyed the video if you like my style of, of uh, instruction would love to have you join me for some online classes um, i do both paid and free honestly they're mostly free um, thursdays we have our tangle time i do two sessions uh, information is on my website or you know feel free to you know you can connect with me on there and i uh, would be happy to direct you if need be also you know there's uh we have a nice Facebook group. We have, uh, uh, I am posting on Instagram and uh, trying to get Pinterest more in my habit. Pinterest, we don't really have a conversation um, as much as like on Instagram. But uh, but do connect if you, you know, if you would like to. And yeah, with that, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, if, if you enjoyed it also, I appreciate every like, every share, every subscription. So if you, uh, you know, if you would help me out with that, that would be lovely. And with that, this was fun and I hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate you watching and I wish you happy tangling.